in the middle of like workouts and coming into OTAs where I started feeling like something was up. You know, this is year like, two. This is you going to year two, yeah. Coming off coming off IR, whatever it is for yeah, five months later. 2014. You know I mean? six, six months later and uh dude, I just started feeling like tired and like what the what the fuck is going on, man? Like I wasn't hitting my numbers that I'm usually at, like in that process, like when you start jumping up. Yeah. And uh I'm like, man, something saw it. And then I got it, like started getting like a cough and I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. I, were you like, like super, were you cough? super alarmed or was it kind of like no, I a was naggy like, kind of deal? Oh uh, man, I'm coming off IR. Like I hadn't played football in a while. I hadn't, you know, put in work like this on the field doing all this stuff. It yeah. must just be like fatigued, like yeah. getting back into the swing of things. This is fine. And then I got the cough that wouldn't go away. I was like, man, this is... This is weird. Like, it's off. not something, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I was super, I never felt like this before. Mm -hmm. Like tired, coughing. And then I started getting night sweats. And they were like really like bad night sweats. Like the whole, like my sheets would be completely soaked. Really? I'm like, this is something, something's weird. But I just kept kind of like grinding through. Right. Went on for, for a few weeks. And then finally we're out in, in OTAs. <clears throat> and I was like, man, it was right, right after Ben Jones's wedding. Mm -hmm. I came back. So I'm like, man, I'm hungover. What, what's the deal? And I couldn't breathe, man. I had a terrible cough. And the cough I, just slowly got worse. Slowly got worse. Like it just felt like it was there was fluid or something in there. Like I knew something was off. That deep, and like bronchitis. Like, cough. Yeah, like you were coughing really deep, but nothing was coming out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, this, that's this is weird. Like there's like nothing I ever ever felt before. And I basically pass out out there. The trainer's like, "What the fuck is going on with you?" Like so you're, you're going out, you're, to see you're out in the field. I'm and out you in pass the field out. in Houston in the heat, doing all this stuff. Yeah, like, in OTAs. Class, in OTAs, and the trainer's like, "Yeah, something's up. We're, we're going to send you to the team doctor." And you and you just passed out in the field. Legit, no, like legit I, no, passed out. no, I didn't pass out, but I, I felt like I was going to. Yeah, you're lightheaded. You're yeah, getting, lightheaded. You're, you're seeing the lights and everything. I was like, man, this is this is brutal. Like mm -hmm. something is up. And the trainer agreed, and so I went to see Doctor Munz, who's a team doctor, and uh, he took a listen to my my chest, and he's like, "You need to go to the emergency room right now. Get an X-ray." I'm like. This is weird. He's like, don't How panic. How did he say it? Was it like an like a, an alarming? No, he's like, hey, this is this is uh, can be one of a few things. It can be like a an infection on your lungs. It can be you know bronchitis. It can be like all. He, he kind of listed a, a bunch of things. He didn't say he didn't say cancer, but mm -hmm. you know, I think he knew kind of instantly. He's like, you need to go down to the emergency room right now and get an X ray. And so like, all right, that's weird. Got an X ray. Packed my stuff up like I was gonna leave. And then another doctor comes in. He's like, "Hey, you you can't leave right now. You need to go to the emergency room. We have to run a couple of other tests." I'm like, "All right." So like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, for at this real? point, you starting to get like stressed. Yeah, like, I'm starting to get nervous. stressed out. And then <clears throat> X-ray led to a MRI, which led to a PET scan, which led to a, a PET. <clears throat> what's a PET scan? It basically scans your body for cancer, basically mm -hmm. like cancer cells. And then eventually a uh, a biopsy and eventually a diagnosis. So were you wondering before you're doing this stuff, you're like, do I have cancer? No, that didn't cross my mind. None until, of that crossed your mind at all. You're no. just kind of listening to them wondering like what the fuck's going yeah, on. Yeah, I thought it was like an infection or something. I'm like, of course, man, I'm 23 years old. Like I'm, you know, I'm what, like I'm pro athlete. Like, this don't happen. Right. This yeah. don't happen to us. And uh, so that was the last thing that crossed my mind until they said what a PET scan was. And then I was like, shit putting stuff together yeah I'm, like a lot none, none of it adds up shit it might it might be yeah this you know mm -hmm. and uh Fuck. eventually i did get diagnosed uh with non-hodgkin's t-cell lymphoblastic lymphoma and how uh, long how long between that scan all those tests was this days at a time no that was, that was that was all hours that was all that night it was all one day yeah all one day so you go from having a cough you're you're at practice have a cough, tell the trainer, listen, I'm, I'm fucked up. I feel like I'm going to throw up. I feel like I'm oh. going to pass out. Next day, I go. And he diagnosis. checks your lungs. X-ray. And he says, MRI, get out of here. Go see the doctor. Doctor says, go to the emergency the next room. next morning. Diagnosis in the afternoon. No way. Who was your first phone call? Oh, to my parents. Right when you got out. Right when you left the building. You weren't with your wife no, at the time yet? No, I wasn't with my wife. I, I don't think I called anybody for for, for a while. After so, you but hold on, go, go back, Go back real quick. So... You do, all these tests are done. You're yeah. sitting in this waiting room, I'm assuming. Yeah. 
uh, you're laying down on this bed, and the doctor comes in with um, like an intern or something like that. No, there was like ten doctors. Ten doctors. In. Yeah. Fuck. And they like walk in the room, and what do they say to doctors. you? Like, well, how, like, how do they? Yeah. Tell you that everything's different now. They're like, hey, we we have the results. They were basically they were very very black and white. They weren't like easing into it. Like, we got really? the results. Our diagnosis is you you have non Hodgkin T cell lymphoblastic lymphoma. It's a very rare and a very aggressive form of cancer um our suggestions that you start chemotherapy treatments immediately what's your reaction and i had kind of like gathered like this was a this was a pretty good possibility so, so you weren't so you weren't i was still i was him? still like no fucking way like mm. it hadn't fully kind of really hit you for yeah real. i was like no fucking way this is happening to me like no like no way you know whatever i ate good you know, went out and drank a little bit, and but then like, I wasn't doing anything crazy. You know, I didn't like, yeah. smoke a pack of cigarettes a day or nothing. Like you know, all the things that you like grow up like. Yeah, oh, you're living a regular twenty three year old's life, a, a professional athlete's life. You know what I mean? I ate, mm -hmm. ate, ate well and did all that. I'm like, oh, no way. And uh, I said that I think I just sat there for a while and thought, I'm like, man, I was just at practice. You know, now. What time is it during the day? Yeah, this is in the afternoon. So it's late late uh, afternoon, like it's a dark outside. So I got the test in the morning. No, it was it wasn't like in the summer. So damn. So then uh, you, you die. You're just trying to digest it all, and then I'm you guys trying to digest get out, it all, and then and then the and then Cap comes back in person because he he got the news from Doctor Mons, who was over there, and he came back in person. Who 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 who's Cap? Cap is a trainer for the Texans. Okay. Yeah. So Cap came back, and you're like, so sorry, like. Is that when it started to hit you? And that's when it started to hit me. Like, this is the head trainer for the Houston Texans telling me, like, you sorry that I got diagnosed with cancer. Like, that's super heavy. He's like, have yeah. you told anybody? It was pretty emotional. Like, no, yeah. Like, no, I haven't. Fuck. He's like, all right, let's call your parents. And I call my parents. And were you able to tell them? Were you able to get it out? <clears throat> it was. It was pretty. I was pretty emotional. Yeah, telling my parents that because they were on a vacation in Europe and <clears throat> it was, it, it, that's a tough convert. That's a tough conversation to have because you know, like you're about to cause them pain, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, like you're going to drop something super heavy and emotional on them. And you know, you almost feel like guilty a little bit. Like, man, this, this is going to, this is going to really mess them up and mm -hmm. going to be really hard on my family. And uh, that's a really selfless mindset to have. Like a lot of people would sit there and be like, "Man, poor me, poor this, poor that." But it, uh, like when something like that happens to yeah. people, it's not just one person that's affected; it's everybody that they love. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, so I, I mean, told them, and next thing you know, I was going across the street to MD Anderson to uh, start start chemotherapy, man, as a as a cancer patient over there. No shit. Yeah. And this is still during the spring summertime. This is the next day. Next day. I mean, no, that that afternoon, right after they told me. So you okay? So you're. I'm just recapping everything because this is like this is lot, like this is less than 24 hours. Fuck. So you go. Yeah, maybe 36 hours. It, it was quick, man. It was yeah. really quick. So you go. You're at practice. Now, in the first, morning, I went to the sperm bank and and um, did it because they said there's like a low chance that it could affect your fertility. So I went to the sperm bank in Houston and did that first and then spanked it you spanked it <laughs> spanked it on man, spanked it real quick how okay. just to uh, you know, hedge your bet if anything yeah, goes no down crime. you know <laughs> no just want to be want to be for sure you're and, like hey uh, you're like hey can I get a hand I'm kind of in a low spot I got a now. situation I don't know if I can do this I got on a my situation own. right now yeah <laughs> it's really I, hard for me to get uh, this thing up <laughs> That, was, def that was definitely super emotional. Hey, hey, people I'm still like, use magazines. You pop out. People still <laughs> use did. magazines. They had magazines. They're like, do you want any of this material? And they had like a whole like category, like whole freaking they didn't even catalog have, for you to they pick. They didn't even have VHS. They had nothing. <laughs> no, you just take out your phone. Like oh, I'm good. Man. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's a Wi-Fi password? Let me get out of this. Yeah, that was that was uh, experience. And then after that, it was back to MD Anderson to fucking start chemo. Jesus. Yeah, it was. It was pretty gnarly, but I got over to MD Anderson, and I MD Anderson is one of the, like the top the top cancer hospitals in the in the country. And uh, <clears throat> I got over there, and they're like, "This is this is really serious. This is a very rare." And I meet with my oncologist, and he's like, 
you know, I, I've dealt with this before, but it's very rare and very aggressive. The thing about that is we have a trial chemotherapy that has been getting really good in results and it's not available, you know. Anywhere else. Anywhere else. It's available right here. We, we developed it and we're getting really good results and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, that's, that's really weird uh, that that's here. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like anywhere, the anywhere in the world, like I'm in Houston. Yeah. And and they have a they have a trial chemo for me. And of course I'm like, yeah, you know what? Like I'm all in on this. Like let's everything I can. Like I'm putting all my trust into you guys. Mm -hmm. You guys, you guys are the best. Like we're we're gonna fight this thing with everything I got. Yeah. And uh and then the next day. I'm still processing it. I'm still, you know, everybody had come to kind of, kind of see me. Ben Jones came. It was like mm -hmm. that first night. It was Ben and <clears throat> JJ and uh, Cody, and everybody came in and we kind of like had a meal. We didn't like even really talk that much. We just kind of sat, sat there and, and ate. Yeah, sat and ate and just, you know, tried to be, tried to be guys like just hanging out, you know, shooting the right, shit. But yeah. everyone was like, man, this is kind of living with that. I don't know what room. To, I don't know what to say. Like. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be fine like i don't know like maybe i won't be or and they're like hey man we're, we feel for you but we don't know how to you know it was like a real awkward thing but everybody everybody had come by and said it and then a couple of days into it actually the owner of the texans bob mcnair came in because i didn't know this, but he was getting cancer treatment there too as well and and no one knew was this like a secret thing it, in, in the beginning it was it was it was secret mm -hmm. and uh but then he kind of came out publicly and said, hey, I am fighting it. Uh, and so he comes into the room and he's like, hey, Quiz. Everybody called me Quiz in Houston, kind of like. Yeah. Here in Nashville, he goes, hey, Quiz. I'm really sorry to hear about your diagnosis. I'm really sorry to hear about all this. Uh, I've been praying on this a lot. And the Texans are going to they're gonna back you through this fight, man. As long as it takes, whatever it takes. You know, we you have our support. You're gonna beat this thing, and you're gonna come back, and you're gonna you're gonna play for us in in that Texan uniform, and I can't wait to see it. And I was just like, oh my god, like this guy knows my name, like it's the owner yeah, of the team, yeah, like yeah. I was a six round draft pick on IR the year before, like, and now he's saying, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I, I couldn't wild, I couldn't oh, man, hardly awesome. believe it, and so, um, you know, may, may God rest his soul. He passed away last last season, obviously, but you know that that was one of the one of the beautiful moments, like me coming back and playing for the Texans, um, in 2017, he got to see those those two games, and uh, very cool. That is yeah, cool, he came man. up to me and he's like, "Lots of prayers answered today, man. This was this is what we were going for. That was a special moment to be able to share that, mm -hmm. share that with him, and uh, kind of like have those things come true. You know, prayer, prayers prayers come true. That that's a special that's a special thing."